Hey, welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to repair and make chips look much better on your vehicle. And this is my 2005 Honda Accord. You can see that the front end has a lot of chippage, but this one specifically really bothers me. So we're gonna show you today how to make this look better. It won't be perfect, but it will go from looking like this to looking like this. And we're gonna show you how we did it right now. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to use is some degreaser. Here I'm using some super clean. The degreaser is gonna make sure that the panel here is going to be completely cleaned out. And when we go to sand, our sandpaper can do its job efficiently. So here we have a nice clean panel. Now this is a little bit rough. So we wanna do an initial sanding here and smooth out the edges of each one of these chips. And for this step, I'm using an Ego Abrasives Toll Cut Kit and I chose to use the block and the 1200 grit. And from here, you just go around and you'll softly sand the surface to help smooth it out. This is gonna do two things. It's gonna create adhesion and it's gonna smooth out the transition between the actual chip and the rest of the surface. This is very important to get the smoothest possible finish when doing a massive chip repair like this. And we can notice here, there's still a little bit of a dent. We'll use our finger just to give a little bit of adhesion around each one of these guys so that it's a little bit smoother. Next up, we're gonna use some UV putty fine. This is what's going to separate chip repair from just touching it up. We also have ourselves a single edge razor blade. In this step, we just wanna put a little bit of putty in each one of these guys to help transition the panel and the chip into one and take away the coarseness of the jagged edge of where the chip was. From this point, you'll need an inexpensive UV light. Everything used in this video will be in the description. This will cure the UV. Keep in mind, it will never cure unless it has this flashlight or exposed to the sun's rays for at least three minutes straight. So in just seconds, it's completely cured and it's ready for some sanding. You can feel here, it's not perfectly smooth and that's 100% okay. In the following steps, you'll see how we smooth it out as much as we can. We'll then flip back to our 1200 grit and we'll give it a little sanding. Sometimes this won't be enough to sand it, so we'll use a little bit of our degreaser as lubricant to help move it along. Check periodically. If you sand too much, you can go through the existing clear coat and we don't want that. Here we can see we have a little bit of UV left and over here as well. For the most part, it's smoothing out, but it's not 100% smooth. They feel much better, but they're just a little bit too jagged. So let me give it just a little bit more of a swipe and then we'll do the same exact thing. And again, in just a few moments, it's dry and it's ready to sand. A little bit of lubricant and we'll smooth it up. It's much smoother and it'll be ready for our paint now. Next up, you have two options for color. You can first use a touch up or you can use the spray can. Both options will really work, but I prefer the spray can because it comes out a little bit smoother when doing this UV filler. And the cool thing about this UV putty is it's completely flat. You don't need any Bondo. You can paint right over it, no primer, no nothing. So a little bit of degreaser and some 600 grit. And what that's gonna do is really help get this panel nice and smooth. Now you could originally use 600 grit, but I don't want you to tear up the edges too much of the chip. Now this might look like it's still not smooth, but it is completely smooth. You can feel it and hear it. Now what you wanna do here is we're gonna prepare around four to five inches around the chip. And keep in mind guys, this repair is for an older vehicle. You don't want something to really um, rust and you wanna make it look better. Do not do this on your brand new spanking car. Not even a car that's five or six years old would I do this on. I would do it on an older vehicle. You just want to make it look better. The paint on this car is toast. I just want to make this look better. It's kind of an eyesore. So once we do that, it's perfectly smooth. 
Now I happen to have this same color, so if you don't, make sure you get the color for your car. And all we're gonna do is just give it a little touch up. A little test, just a little bit of paint on the surface there. Get that chip filled in. Don't put too much on. You can always use a little bit of heat to get things moving. And a little bit more. And then once we put our final coat on, let this dry for a good 30 minutes. And this is a clear coat we're going to be using. Now you wanna use a high quality spray can clear coat. Now high quality and spray can doesn't make sense, but now it does because these cans are 2K and it comes with this red cap that when you put it on the bottom here and you puncture the bladder inside, the bladder contains the catalyst, a enclosed bag, and that will mix with the clear coat. So when you push it down, okay, it will pop the bladder inside. Once it's popped, then you'll shake it up. And that's just what we're gonna do. We'll give it a good shake for about a good three minutes. Those two contents will then mix together and you're ready for clear coat. All right, we're gonna give it two coats. Of about five minutes in between coats. Stop it right there. And then the next coat will stop it in and around here. And hopefully that will give us a nice edge to buff. Now, while that dries, just to show you what type of car you would be doing this on is a car that really needs a paint job. Okay. So a car like this, like on the same hood, it's got no paint, right? The fenders are beat up. And I mean, look at the roof. There's no paint on the roof. This needs to be completely down the metal. Now it's been a good five minutes here and we're ready for the second coat. We'll apply the second coat, let it thoroughly dry. We'll take the buffer out and see if we can blend the two together. We're gonna let this really dry up. We'll sand it down and then we'll see how good we can get it to look with the rest of the hood. So now I'm back here the next day. I let this dry overnight. You really want to give this a good 12 to 24 hours to dry. And you want to make sure that it's completely dry because otherwise you'll be sanding back this edge and you'll see it start to show. You don't want that. Now we're going to sand this whole area with a 2000 grit. And I'm going to use a DA sander for this because I like how nice it puts a sand scratch into the finish. We'll start lightly sanding the edge where the two clears will meet. And then we can lightly go over the area in which we did our repair. And I like to do this so that there's no dirt and everything's pretty uniform for the most part. I'm using the lowest sanding speed here. You don't need to rip through the clear. 2000 grit is all you need to do this. You don't need to use anything more aggressive because you'll be removing too much material for this job. We're gonna sand a little bit more to get that overspray off. And you can feel it with your hand to see if it's ready to go, if it's nice and smooth in a transition, then most likely after it's polished, it's gonna be smooth as well. And we can see how nicely this sanded. We don't see any really transition line, which is a good thing. So now at this point, we're gonna use a little bit of water base um, cleaner, which is actually a, um, a detailer. You could use water for this. And we've got 3000 grit. And that's gonna help again with the sanding and polishing phase. It's gonna make for a nicer finish and more consistent. And I'm gonna extend a little bit past where I was initially doing that sanding, just to kind of pull in everything together. Now you can do this all by hand. That is not a problem. You don't need to use this tool. Um, it doesn't need to be an electric sander like this. It can be air powered if you have it, or just by hand, it will do the same thing but make sure you do finish with the 3000 because that is a softer scratch. Do a little bit of a wipe. And at this point, I got a polish here. We're gonna start by doing a little polish with a rotary. You're gonna have to use a little bit of a rotary first to really get the sand scratches out. So I have some on the rag here and you're just gonna put a little bit on. Now, obviously that's not too pretty, but just get it onto the panel kind of spread it out and start at a low speed and work it into the panel. We're not looking for perfection on the first pass. 
but we want to start to work that polish in. And once again, I'll leave everything in the description. I'll give you some different options that you can use to get the job done. There's a few different products that will get the same result. It might be a little bit more cost effective for you. The one thing you're gonna need, you cannot do this by hand, is some sort of rotary polisher. A regular polisher is not gonna have enough um, RPM to really get that shine back. The rotary is. And at this point, I'm just gonna go over the whole hood with the rotary, um, just to kind of clean it up and see how this repair will look. It will look more funny if we just do this one area and we don't actually buff the whole entire hood. So let's just take about 15 more minutes to get this much better. Next up, we're gonna use a dual action polisher, a much safer option. This is gonna remove all the swirls with a swirl remover. So you wanna go over the whole entire hood at this point because you want everything for the most part to look as good as it can. The rotary buffer is gonna smooth out the paint, but this is going to leave it a little bit more swirl free. Now, I've told you that this panel is pretty beat up, so we're gonna get the best possible outcome with what we've got. And here is the finished product after we went over the whole hood. Still needs a full repaint, but guess what? Our eyesore is completely removed. Although we do have some other chips we can just touch up, it is completely removed and I'm totally happy with the way it looks. Well, we just finished our repair using just spray cans in our own home garage. But wait right there. I don't want you to go attempting this on your brand new car or even your car that's still good paint on it. No, 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 no. You're gonna do this on your older project, a project that might have a little bit of a rust bubble or imperfection that you really don't like that you wanna make look better. You see, this is not a permanent repair. Eventually, that edge right here is gonna come back since it's so thin where we blended it in, especially with the sun on top of a hood doing an open blend like this. It's not gonna last for the lifetime of a vehicle. Now, surely you can come back with the buffer and buff it so often so the line does disappear, but I don't want you to run into this on a new project. So those are words of wisdom. Don't go trying this on your brand new car. Just use a touch up paint and touch a little bit of base and then clear coat and walk away or have a professional do it. Keep in mind that this is only for areas like corners or small spots on your older vehicle. This is a great technique to make it look better and that's just what we had here. And I hope you learned something from this video and hopefully you can apply it to some sort of project, even if it's not doing a blend or maybe just a full repair with full clear coverage is great as well. well guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs>